Hi, I'm Will Lockamy. And I'm Reed Lockamy. Welcome to the Iron Bowl Hour. Or as we like to call it, the show that could not be any more excited about this weekend's big game. Will, remind me, who is Samford playing? Oh, who are they Probably playing? Probably Wofford. Go Bulldogs. On tonight's show. Uh, Over uh, under on corn dogs consumed in Tuscaloosa. Finish this sentence. Toilet paper is used to... From atop Red Mountain at Vulcan Park and Museum, it's the Iron Bowl Hour. Read it is time for Agree to Disagree. Let's try it out. You're better than me. Agreed. D hmm. Alabama versus LSU could be the game of the century. There's not been a regular season one versus two matchup like this in the SEC since the 1970s. Both teams feature strong defenses with efficient offenses. Who wins this game and why? All right, Will, oh, this is a tough game to pick, but I am going to say that LSU is going to win the game, and it's going to be because they're going to come in playing looser. They don't have as much pressure on them. People sort of are expecting Alabama to win, so I think Alabama is going to be a little bit tight. LSU wins. Yeah, I know. I understand the line is like four and a half at this point, mm -hmm. but Reed LSU is the number one team in the country, so I, I think a lot of people expect them to win or expect it to at least be a close game. I, though, believe Alabama is going to easily win this game, possibly by two touchdowns. It's a home game for Alabama. They've only lost, like, one game in the last two or three years there. We know mm -hmm. which one that was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, Nick Saban is 13-1 and in revenge games. This is a revenge game he lost last year to LSU. Okay, but, Will, you may be forgetting about the law of averages, right? I am. Which, I have okay. no idea what that okay. is. Okay, well, the law of averages says that you can't keep up some crazy streak like that, right? Oh, okay. So, Nick Saban has won 13 and of these revenge games. He's only lost one. Right. That can't last forever. Law of averages just says return to the mean he's coming back he's it, statistically he has to lose this one and let's not forget by the way LSU has a big long streak right, right. they have won 30 night games they're either uh, at neutral sites or on the road as odd as that is this is a night game right they've won sure. 30 they've only lost one they have to win statistics says LSU will win the well, game read law of average says that it's time the, for them to lose the game I think the law of average only works against Nick Saban I think that's the way that works so listen in the end will here's the deal we've talked about this before on the on the show alabama this year has a one game schedule right they're playing <laughs> if they win this one game then this so that's all they gotta do they've just been waiting for this so one look, game. that's good because all they yeah they've just had right. to get ready for this one game but at the same time they haven't had the same sort of tests that lsu has had leading up to this big game this right. is nothing new for lsu playing in these huge pressure games against good teams they start off the season playing against oregon right all these sorts of games so i, I think lsu comes into this a little bit more comfortable and confident in their abilities, and I think they win the game. Well, I think their crowd may be so drunk by that time that they'll be totally pulled out of the game, won't really know what's going on and know when to cheer. I think no. that plays in Alabama's mm -mm. favor. Mm -mm. No, you're wrong about that again. Okay. Listen, <clears throat> LSU's crowd definitely is going to be drunk. Yeah. Sometime around 1130 in the morning, many yeah. of them will be sobered back up by the time that the game rolls around. They will gotcha. be cheering more effectively at that time. Right. So, I, listen, all signs point to LSU winning this game. I'm going to say maybe by 30 points. <laughs> all signs to yeah. Alabama winning this, winning this game, and I think by two touchdowns uh, over uh, under on corn dogs consumed in Tuscaloosa um how many how many LSU fans will be eaten is that what you're asking <laughs> right okay uh let's go with three uh, we actually agree on that yeah after a spectacular offensive performance last week against Ole Miss Auburn has a week off before they head to Athens for their annual matchup with Georgia can Clint Mosley remain consistent and lead this team to a victory over the dogs? Reed, I think Clint Mosley, now granted it was against Ole Miss, showed us that he can be the quarterback that Auburn needs. I think finally they let him get into a rhythm. They didn't have Kyle Frazier in there as much as they had mm -hmm. in the past, and he made some really great passes. Now granted, Philip Lizard Chicken caught that one with his, uh, the glue on his hand, so that helped out the I think uh, you mispronounced there. that. I think it's Loves His Kitchen is oh, what it is. Philip, sorry. Well, listen, this is like the talk we had about Trent Richardson's fantastic run against uh, Ole Miss. Listen, right. I, I can I can be an effective quarterback against Ole Miss, right? That's okay. not saying anything at all. Um, <laughs> if anything, the fact that Auburn played well against Ole Miss and sure. the fact that Clint Mosley played well against Ole Miss means if you know anything about the way their season has right. gone, that they lose the game against Georgia. Remember, they are a roller coaster team. They play well one week, they play poorly the next week, right. then they play even worse the week after that, then even worse, then a little bit better. <laughs> 
they're going to lose. I think they'll, they'll get all the uh, bad bugs out of their system this week when they have an off weekend and whatever flag football games they're playing. Uh, I think the Ole Miss game is going to give them the confidence to know, hey, we can perform the way we know that we can as an offense, and they're going to go into Athens and do just fine. Clint Mosley really is answering the questions that have been plaguing that offense. Listen, it, it's going to be false confidence is the thing because Mark Rick, he's no dummy, right? He, well, I mean, it may Okay, let's just say he's no dummy. Okay. He's using the same strategy that Les Miles used, right? He's resting up some of his players with a, a suspension at just the right time, getting yeah, them ju- ready. Yeah, just a weird time, wasn't it? Yeah, he, yeah, a little bit weird. He knows that his job is on the line, right? right? Um, there's a lot for uh, for Georgia in this game to be playing for, right? I think that I think Auburn comes into Athens, right? This is once again a very young, inexperienced team. I think they have a very difficult time running into not just Georgia's players, but also Let's not forget Todd Grantham, the assistant coach, who is just a violent person. He's going to be the toughest issue that Auburn has to deal with, Mm -hmm. uh, without question. With that said, Auburn also has a lot to play for at this point. Reed, they're bowl eligible now, but there's a big difference between playing in the Cotton Bowl and going down the street and playing down here. Reed, is there is there really a difference in those things? Because at the end of the at the end of the day, do people really care if you played in the Cotton Bowl or the Poulon Weed Eater Bowl? I don't think anyone actually cares. It's the question is, did you play in the national championship game? You didn't. Oh, who cares? Your season's over. Yeah, but I think it'd be cooler to play at Cowboy Stadium than a, a broken down Legion Field. Uh, may maybe so for the two and a half days that people remember that event after the fact. I can't wait for Auburn to win this one. Mm-hmm. In this current day and age, football players are constantly under the spotlight. Whether it's ESPN, Twitter, blogs, or message boards, it is almost impossible to tune it out. How does this non-stop media exposure affect the players? Well, I don't think that there's any question about this. This is a positive thing for these young people. They, the Listen, this is why these kids get into playing college football, right? Okay. I'm sure they love the game or whatever, but the reason they have sought out these high-profile schools playing in the SEC is because they want to play in front of huge crowds, right? They want to be on television. They want to be chuckled at by Vern Lundquist, right? This is, this is this one. <laughs> right? Kind of like that. That's not bad, actually. Yeah, that's pretty good. good. I was going to do my Keith Jackson, but I'll, I'll save it for another day. It okay, sounds just great. like my Kermit the Frog. Um, the thing is, this is this is what the kids want you should always give children whatever they want and here the (laughs) kids are getting that and there you go it's good yeah I was gonna say they may want the exposure Mm -hmm. but they don't actually need it criticism is not a good thing for them they may want to go out drinking late at night but they don't need to be doing that. they should drink earlier in the evening is that what you're saying (laughs) right take Mm -hmm. Kyle Frazier for example Mm -hmm. the Auburn quarterback the backup quarterback at this point the first game he really got in to start throwing some passes he threw two interceptions and was bombarded on Twitter with criticism Mm -hmm. he felt like he had to put out some blanket apology to the fans that's undue pressure on a kid there's no reason for him to feel like he needs to apologize to all the fans for having a somewhat bad performance in his first college game on the road in an SEC stadium. I just don't think there's any need for it. And then you take these jerks like Sports by Brooks and uh, Mm -hmm. Clay Travis. Yeah, Yeah, just total rumor mongers, just spreading rumors constantly about these. What do you mean spreading rumors? Well, they're just like getting some kind of... You know, story. Facts and, and, and no, no, no. Just stories, not necessarily factory, but zero evidence, and starting to run with them. And all of a sudden, people think are bad you things about, like, about the these Cam kids. Cam Newton case and all that. Well, there's the Cam Newton yeah. case. There's a Trent Richardson situation. Oh yeah, both of those where those kids were doing clearly the wrong thing. Listen, I read about it on Sports by Brooks. It was very convincing. <laughs> they were no. listen, Will pictures, right. captions, advertisements. Right. I mean, listen, <laughs> when you read something on the website like that, it's definitely true. But even the the negative criticism, right, for these kids is still good for the kids in the long run because either they're getting positive attention right in the chuckle that we talked about earlier and heard your fantastic impersonation but or they're getting some criticism and that's teaching them valuable life lessons about how to listen life's not easy right bad things happen your car breaks down and it breaks down again two weeks later and then what's wrong with the stupid car why can't they figure it out and you have to learn how to deal with adversity right and this is what this sort of media exposure does for these kids i just think the kids have enough pressure playing in front of all those people and having to deal with just the day-to-day thing i'm sure they got students making fun of them as they walk to class well i went to college we made fun of them yeah welcome to school that's the way it is and that's, yeah. that's not just football players that's anybody who goes to school that's yeah. what you're in school to do is I, to be made fun of i think it's how, a, yeah. i think it's a bad thing for the guys okay well i i don't think so listen everybody enjoys their minute in the sun or their 15 minutes of fame or their 30 minute long hour you know hour long tv show or whatever right. it is they're going to get people like having exposure and i think this is in the end good for the football player. Thunder. I'm not saying they don't want the exposure. Mm-hmm. I think they think probably think that's really cool in the beginning. Mm-hmm. I just don't think it's a good for them. Well, you're wrong about that. Well, I'm right about this. Yeah. Stay tuned for more of the Iron Bowl Hour. Read it's time for rapid fire questions with former Auburn linebacker Mike Captain Crunch Colin. Ready? Here we go. Here we go. 
By how many points will Auburn lose this year's Iron Bowl? Lose? Mm -hmm. I don't think I want to talk about losing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, really. yeah. Who's a better coach, Gene Chiswick or Craig T. Nelson? Uh, coach Chiswick is. Okay. Well, yeah. yeah. Were you ever called? I don't even know the other guy. <laughs> I should, maybe, yeah. but anyway. Who are you pulling against in this weekend's Alabama LSU game? Pulling against? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm pulling for both of them. Okay. okay. Yeah. Political, yeah. political yeah. answer. You don't have to give us a chance. Hey, I fine. like both teams, man. I just, it's exciting go. to have, you know, one and two play like that. Sure. Yeah. He makes Great. it sound like he means it. So yeah, I do mean it. <laughs> yeah. All right. Finish this sentence. Toilet paper is used to blow my nose. Okay. Give us three words you would use to describe Nick Saban. Nick Saban? Mm -hmm. uh, he's very intense. Oh, okay. Oh, he nice. did it in three words. That's good, yes. You did say three words. Yeah, right? yeah. You got it. Okay, well, I Give can us, count. Has Trooper Taylor ever popped you with his towel? No, he hadn't. He's not. No, okay. he hadn't. I hadn't been close enough, uh, yeah. you know, in a Those are game, factual yeah. once again. game day event, you know, to allow that to happen. All right, here's a tough one. When linemen dream, do they dream of the fumble rooski? Yeah. Mm. Mm. Really the only dream they have. Yeah, yeah for sure. Good job, yeah. Mike Cole. Oh, oh, it's a pleasure being Wonderful. with you guys. Yes, Excellent. sir. I'll fly down and I'll meet y'all there. Sounds, Sounds great. great. Yeah. <laughs>
and he wrote two words up on the board, and those two words were world champions, world champions. Now, the Dolphins' best season to date had been three wins and 11 losses in a four-year franchise history. So uh, that first year, we won 10 games, and then we were in the Super Bowl the next year. And uh, we had some good players, offensively, defensively, and, um, and we just had a great chemistry. I mean, we played together as, as, as close uh, as a team has ever probably played in the, in the NFL to accomplish what we did in that perfect season. But with all of that, the ball had to bounce our way once or twice or three sure. times or whatever else to, to make it happen. We're back with more with Mike Colon after this. Mike Colon, former linebacker from Auburn, still with us. Uh, now talking about that 1972 Dolphins team that went undefeated, uh, why has it been so difficult for a team since then to do that? Uh, it just seems like every now and then that kind of thing would happen. There would be, just be a team that was that good, but no, not so much. Well, there, there have been a number of teams that are probably that good, but uh, the ball just didn't bounce their way. Um, if, if there's a team that has a number of uh, wins and mm -hmm. Hadn't been defeated yet. Late my, in the season. My mother-in-law starts praying against that team, and they ultimately lose. Well done. So, yeah. You know, but if they do, then we got to tip our hat to them. That's just all it is to it. Now, I just have to point out that them. this is the smallest Super Bowl ring I've ever seen here. Uh, and, <laughs> and you won two Super Bowls, so it seems like you would it'd really take up the whole thing. Melded yeah. together. Yeah. One, I don't one. Normal, I, I just. Uh, but I you don't, have them? I don't wear you, it every day. Where do you keep them? Just in. Uh, my uh, my sock drawer. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah, he saves those for punching. Yeah. <laughs> Don't go. tell anybody that. I won't for sure. Now I want to talk a little bit about the rivalry between Alabama and Auburn. Back in your day, do you feel like it was as intense as it is now? Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah same thing. So. Yeah, yeah, it's very intense. I mean, it's yeah. it's really unbelievable. We've spoken with so many people doing this show that have moved to Alabama and just had no idea, and then when they got here. You know, we're just flabbergasted. And, of course, we all grew up here, so we, we're just kind of used to the fact that we're all insane. Yeah, well, that's true. It was just as intense and as it is today. I mean, it's always been the, one of the greatest rivalries in the country, the if greatest. not the greatest, obviously. We think in Alabama. Now, people in other states think differently. They don't get it. But, but uh, they, don't really, they really don't get it. Right. You're right. Uh, because it is the, the greatest rivalry. And I think what makes uh, it more intense here than, say, in Ohio State or Michigan is you're rooting against your next-door neighbor or your wife, someone, mm -hmm. that, someone that you deal with yeah. every day, right. as opposed to someone who's in a different state that you don't have to talk to all that often. Right. And the football yeah. teams are good. That's oh, and, yeah. so. and they've got, we've got good teams, yeah. Yeah. for sure. Now, speaking of Iron Bowls, so you had the pleasure of attending last year's Iron Bowl, which was a, a pretty big one, and you were there as the guest of whom? Bob Baumhauer, mm. who famously yeah. played for Alabama, yeah, and yeah. who has the wings, and but a great guy, and he he was a uh, a rookie my last year in Miami, and he always tells a funny story about me being an Auburn guy because he and A.J. Dewey, a, a recruit out of a player out of LSU, on Thursday night during training camp, I'd throw him in the back of my pickup truck oh, my and martyr. take him take him yeah. to the movie. Now he so Baumhauer has shared that story with a number of people, uh, realizing that most Auburn people uh, drive a pickup truck. Sure, now, I, I, I had a pretty nice pickup truck in those days, but it was a pickup truck. Now, when he tells the story, does he ever say that you, he would ride in the back of your pickup truck to go to a movie? Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Movie, yeah. 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 I got you. But anyway, it, um, you know, it, it, um, it was fun. Was he ragging you the first half? Was he giving you a hard time when Auburn's down 24 to nothing? Bob Baumheimer is one of the finest gentlemen I know. Right. Period. And one of the nicest guys I know. Yeah. And so he was just sitting back, relaxed, uh, uh, and um, we were in a box, and he wasn't even looking down on the field. He was just kind of watching it on the TV and uh, that type of thing. So he, um, he, he was very unemotional. Right. I, I'm sure he was pleased when the you know that the score was 24 to 3 at one time or 24, 24 to nothing, to nothing at yeah. one time in the game game over and yeah. of course you know we, we we're going to sit there kind of kind of relaxed ourselves right. and not say a whole lot being down 24 points now let me ask you this the fact that he was such a gracious host and did not rag you when your team was down so badly did that make you feel at all guilty at the end when you i assume ragged him pretty hard when your team came back and won no we didn't rag him 
No, you don't do that oh. when you're oh. the guest of somebody. Yeah? yeah. No, I, at least I don't do that. You seem like such uh, a firecracker, though. No, oh, yeah, right. I'm a real firecracker. <laughs> uh, that's the last thing I have, Will. Uh, but anyway, especially if you're yeah. someone's guest, mm -hmm. uh, you just, you know, you just take it. Uh, with, um, and in know, a box like, like that, it's, it's a little bit less emotional, I guess, than being in the crowd and bumping shoulders to everyone. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah it, uh, but anyway, it was, a, it was quite obviously, a game, obviously yeah. quite a game and, and very exciting for us Auburn people. I mean, uh, he knew I was excited about it, but I wasn't in his face or sure. jumping, jumping up and down or anything like that because, you know, like you said, he was a very gracious Wait until host he turned and, around and then did those things. Man, we thought we were with a rock star walking into the game with uh, <laughs> right. the stadium with uh, Bob Baumhauer. I bet so. Now, are you going to return the favor this year and take him down to Jordan here? Uh, maybe so. Possibly. Yeah. It's on film now. You're going to have to. Yeah. Be careful. He may rag you pretty hard. It's going to be a rough game. <laughs> Well, Mike Cullen, thanks so much for joining us. This has been a, uh, quite a pleasure. Well, it's, Will, Reed, it's been my yeah. pleasure. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Yeah. Up next, it's time for the Innisfree Trivia Minute. Reed, before we head out to Innisfree, we need to congratulate Brad Parker. He correctly guessed that Sir Ann Stacy was the honorary captain for the 2008 Iron Bowl. How do you know he didn't actually just know that? You say he guessed it. Well, hmm. Brad wouldn't just know things like that. Okay. Well, viewers, don't forget, you too can be a winner like Brad Parker by correctly answering this week's trivia question and submitting your answer either to the email address or phone number at the bottom of the screen. Hey, Reed, let's go to Innisfree. Okay. Hi, I'm Irma. And I'm Nick. Welcome to your Innisfree Trivia Minute. The question of the week is, how many consecutive Iron Bowls were there in which the winners alternated? Is it A, 5, B, 6, or C, 7? Well, that is all the time we have for tonight. Don't forget, viewers, you can follow the show either on Facebook and or on Twitter. Just search for us at the Iron Bowl Hour. We'd like to thank special guest Mike Captain Crunch Colon, clearly the sweetest man on the planet. Also, I'd like to thank my Birmingham Bulls tie. It's very fancy. That's fantastic. For the Iron Bowl Hour, I'm Will Lockamy. And I'm Reed Lockamy. Roll Eagle Reed. War Tide, Will. Vulcan Park and Museum, home to the world's largest cast iron statue, spectacular views, and indoor and outdoor exhibits. For more information, log on to www.visitvulcan.com. Here we go, Will. War is bad. What? Oh. No, okay, good. You're Sorry. supposed to disagree with that. All right. Let's try it out. Kittens aren't cute. <laughs> They're adorable. Okay. But I, hmm, let's try it again. You're supposed to disagree, you damn idiot. <laughs> All right. Here we go. How many times did I say to you? <laughs> Give me the line. Do it. Do it like what you think. Oh, I